Welcome back to United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I'm Lionel McClintock. I am in Canada, in Toronto, actually. And we also have Robert Warren. And he's in the Nashville area. Say hi, Robert. Just outside of Nashville. Hello, what's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode. Welcome to another episode of... Uh... Yeah, you're going to do it? <laughs> hockey. <laughs> I already said the name of it. Oh, you want to talk about the hockey? That's right. Before we get into that, I got to bring no. this up real quick. Everybody knows all this stuff going on with, with the TikTok stuff. So uh, I just wanted to briefly bring this up. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, this is, by the way, from Global News website, uh, in, obviously in Canada. Uh, Trudeau tight-lipped on potential <laughs> U.S. TikTok ban as key bill mm. passes. Basically, to put it bluntly, Canada is waiting to see how things are going to go in the U.S. in regards to that before they consider whether this has to be a ban in Canada too. I guarantee you, if it's a full-out ban, if it, if it goes right through, it will get passed in Canada in record time because there's no way they can have something like that be tightened up over there and be wide open here. And all you have to do is use a VPN. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's gonna right. it's gonna cause uh, logistical security nightmares. So, if it's a full on ban, company doesn't get sold, uh, government doesn't get sued by all the TikTokers or something, then Canada will follow suit. So, uh, yeah. quick thought, Robert, before we move on to something else, then because we got to get to the hockey part. Obviously, it's playoffs. Well, yeah, I, I kind of figured that was probably going to happen. But here's the funny thing: is that if I'm not mistaken, I think. Uh, President Biden gave TikTok six or nine months to sell um, the assets uh, to an American company. I'm sorry, I have to. There's a really good chance that he's not going to be in office by the time this is to no, be enforced. Yeah, totally. But, but here's the thing. <laughs> so I don't. Did he actually say it had to be an American company or just had to not be uh, a government funded or run or biased Chinese company? Um, because I thought it meant it could be to an even another Chinese company. Oh, I did. They were a private company. I may be wrong. Um, you know, that's I a good question. Wrong. That's I a good question. Wrong. I need to. I need to probably look into that. Maybe. Well, I'm sure we can visit that maybe the next week or something, and I'll look into it and I'll get some more information. I thought he said a U.S. based company, but um, I, I, I know they've I talked about it. There's been so much. Though. Yeah, I, there's I'm been actually, so much misinformation flying around. It's hard to keep track of it all. So I, I'll get some more information and we'll talk about it again maybe next week or something. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure that that's what it was, <laughs> mainly because uh, that's really overstepping uh, when you try to tell another country you have to sell to our country. Uh, you're, you're, that's a serious overreach. Uh, so I, I highly doubt that that's the case. But that's yeah, but I think I could be wrong. But we'll move on from that because obviously we have to do a little bit more research. We have to find out more information, see what's going on. So uh, one other thing from uh, Ottawa Citizen. Um, this, this one has me a bit perplexed. I may have misread something because I skimmed it. I admit it. Uh, I used a little, you know, a little AI cheating. <laughs> it had some bullet <laughs> points. But basically in this article that I just very recently saw, Canadian military to destroy 11,000 Second World War era pistols. Now, my first thought is, do you know how many First World War era gun owners there are in the United States that would pay ridiculous amounts of money, even for rusted old ones that they probably think aren't worth that much anyways? For a collection no idea. of them, somebody would pay more, money, more than they're worth. But that's just popped in my head. Now, here's the tagline for it, or under the byline, sorry. Uh, the move comes as the uh, Canadian forces confirmed it has received the final deliveries of a new 9 millimeter pistol as part of a $19.4 million project. Okay, so I'm asking you right now, are they saying that the Canadian, and I'm Canadian, I'm embarrassed if this is true. Please tell me it's not. Are they saying that they have 11,000 World War II pistols that they're using until they receive? New nine millimeter pistols, of which the technology from for how they're made have been around since World War II. <laughs> I hope not. I know. I, like that doesn't sound very. I mean, it, are they going to go back to John Wayne six shooters? <laughs> well, that's not worth a call, but okay. 
you know, I was making yeah, a point. I know yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Colt forty five or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that would be that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call. Okay. That's. Uh, all right. We're gonna move on from that. Uh, and I, you know what? Uh, next week I'll try to give you an update on what that is because I need to understand it a little bit more. I don't know why the Canadian military would still have World War II unless they were in a museum. World War II weapons. So that that doesn't make any sense to me. I, I would think more than likely they probably have like like some stash somewhere that they're just like, you know what, let's just get rid of these and destroy them kind of thing. I, certainly I, hope I, can, so. I can't imagine they're I still really because I know they don't actually use World War II area area era pistols uh, in the military because I mean they they fight in modern day conflicts. They have modern day weapons. Um, when the uh, U.S. military, I'm not sure what is it was it the the army, I believe. Uh, were using mainly, uh, what was it, M16s. Canadians were using a variant of it that was actually better. It was more modern. It was better. It didn't misfire nearly as often. Um, and even American soldiers who were, you know, used to doing maneuvers and, you know, sharing bases in foreign countries or bases close to each other um, were aware of, of this type of thing. It wasn't the most loved weapon in the military in the first place. But Canada is, is, is actually known for having uh, top-tier, state-of-the-art weaponry. Uh, we have very few warships. We don't have any battleships, so well, nobody does anymore, but uh, we have frigates. Um, not very many, obviously, but they also, um, at least until recently, they might be getting a little old now, but until recently, they were considered state-of-the-art. Um, in some cases, they were more advanced than any... Sh well, when they first came out, they were more advanced than any ship in, that America had. Of course, again, we only have X amount of those. You've got like one aircraft carrier that would destroy them. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Anyways, that said, moving on. We obviously have to get to hockey. So before we start talking about the Jets and, and the Nashville Predators, I think you might have heard of the Nashville Predators, Robert. Uh, you may have. Anyways, um, maybe before we talk about them, let's 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 go on to uh, a couple of the other games. Obviously, um, for instance, the Leafs versus the Bruins. Game one, Leafs pretty much destroyed, and you know a lot of people were like, "Oh, it's gonna be bad," and then the Leafs come back and they win. Um, a, a, much, a low, you know, I mean not like a, an embarrassing blowout yeah. kind of thing. I think it was one or two goals, whatever. Um, yeah. But it was solid, excellent effort, uh, good defense, offense when they needed it, good goaltending when they needed it, um, proving that they can beat them. Uh, and I think they really have a chance at this point. It's looking pretty good. Uh, and I, they have to go back to Toronto now because they played those first two games in Boston. So if they can play right. in Toronto like they played the second game in Boston, Toronto has a really good chance. And yeah, at least making it three one series. Possible. Uh, worst case scenario, they come out of Toronto to tied two two, and they make a right. series out of it. Of course, the longer it <clears throat> yeah. goes, I will say this to my dying day: very few teams will outlast Boston in a seven game series. Even yeah, today. they have the longevity for sure, and that's five years ago. But even today. Seven game series. Yeah. I would put my money on Boston unless they were playing uh no, not Dallas. What was I gonna say? Uh it's another one of those animal teams, I think. <laughs> I can't remember the we name. We have Panthers. Panthers, that's it, yes. The Panthers. I could see the Panthers beating almost anybody if it's a seven game series. Well, they're two they're two and oh on Tampa Bay right now. Well, they don't need to go seven games. That's that's irrelevant to what I'm saying. <laughs> I, you know, you understand what I'm saying. If Tampa wins the next two games, um, it's anybody's yeah. guess. But I think Tampa has to go up three games to two and win three in a row in order to have a chance. They're not going to do it if they drop a third one at all. I mean, even if they win yeah, the next one, I, I agree. Three, three I agree. Games to one, they're not going to beat them. Tampa does not look like the Tampa of old, but no. but Pan the Panthers look good. I watched that last game and Bob Roski's standing on his head like crazy. Yeah, all of them are. The whole team is standing on their heads. I, they, they, basically, they're doing what the Jets do, 
And that's every single player on the team is playing goalie before the puck gets to the goalie. And you have to admit, if we do want to move on for a brief moment and say, I'm pretty sure that's how a lot of the Predators players were playing last night too. They went out of their yeah, way. We'll, to we'll get to that. I, I have my thoughts on that yeah, game. We'll, but yeah, yeah, we'll get to we'll, that. We'll get we'll to get that. To that. I, I mean, obviously there were some miscues here and there, but uh, I thought it was probably one of the most solid games I've seen them play in about four years. In yeah. or out. Well, the Rangers series is going about as expected too. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, they're they're two zero on the the caps. Yeah, what's to so. say there? I, I, no. I, you know what? I don't honestly. I don't really have a lot to say about that. Uh, it's like you know, grandma playing against her grandson. You know, who's an elite <laughs> athlete. It doesn't. It's not going to happen. Uh, and and this, yeah. you know, sorry about it, Ov, but you are playing longer than ninety eight percent of all NHLers in history. Yeah, it's not the same Ov, and 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 he's a he's a he's a one shot. He is definitely probably uh, in the top three or four greatest players of all time. Some people would even say the best, and it might be true. It's arguable, but you you know what? He's one dimensional. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, let's put it this way: in in professional wrestling, Bret Hart was at one time the greatest actual professional wrestler in the world. As a wrestler, you can't say that now. No offense. I mean, if Bret Hart sees this, trust me, always a fan, always will be. Don't beat me up because he still could. <laughs> but he's not going to wrestle, you know, like like he did when he was 35 even, yet alone 25. So um, what are we moving on to? Uh, I, I was going to say. Well, I'll, I'll, let's, I'll, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Which, is Which one? <laughs> The Vegas Dallas. Yes, there, there we go. Matchup. Okay. So um while I was glad to see Vegas take out Dallas at home in their first game, which was kind of a beautiful sight to see, in my opinion. However, I, I can't root for Vegas ever. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna as I you. as I shared with you, they're 15 million over the cap. They played this little game like Tampa did when they won their um uh, Stanley Cup, the last Stanley Cup they won. Yes. And because Stone was out on LTIR, and that's long-term injury reserve for those who don't know. Uh, and when you're on that, your salary does not count against the team's cap. So they can bring other players in to replace that player and pay them whatever they want oh, to pay up to whatever they have available. Better. I can't wait till you say the next part. When yeah, well, start. then it, there is no cap. Exactly. So, so now it's like, oh, no hey, count. Stone, come on back. They've got the extra players that they otherwise yes. would not be legally yes. allowed to actually have. That's and right. So, and it's there's no there's no rule against it. They're skirting. Guess the who scored their first goal? Oh, first God. game, first goal. Mark Stone. Okay. So why not? Yeah, it's not? you know sure go yeah. for it. Uh, okay, so basically the bottom line is is. They're obviously trying to bully their way in. I, I, I know I hate to say it that way, but I am going to say it that way. Uh, uh, honestly, oh no, they are Vegas, for sure. That's how Vegas has been since the very first game they played in the league. Good on the whole organization for not being uh, a punching bag when they started. Like all other, you know, teams that were brought into the league brand new were punching bags. Some of them for years. Usually for at least a couple of years, the lightning. But their there. rules were different. But, oh yes, of course. Their like, their no, no, their expansion rules were different. I'll get to that. I'll get to that. When the lightning came in, they were garbage for ten years. Garbage, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when the Preds came in, you guys did a little bit better early on than 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 the lightning did early on, but not. Not uh, first few years, yeah, were right? terrible. Atlanta, Atlanta gets a team. And I'm talking about 1970s, by the way. They <laughs> suck so bad, they have to move to Calgary. <laughs> they get another team in, uh, what, the 90s, I want to say? Yeah, I don't yeah. know exactly um, when. And, and they, they suck so bad that they move to Winnipeg to become the Jets, who sucked uh, bad enough. <laughs> Business wasn't run well enough. <laughs> they ended up moving to Phoenix, and now we know they're going to be the Elrons, but that's another story altogether. 
Uh, I'll let Robert explain that one later. Anyway, or we'll talk about it later, obviously. But yeah, no, I, I, I'm not as interested in the whole series, to be honest with you. I'm not sure I care which one, which team wins that one. Um, because regardless of which one wins, it's going to be the toughest game for whoever gets through to, to, to face them. Either one of them, it's going to be hard. That's it. Yeah, well. I have a special despise in my heart for Dallas, and I think well, it just goes back to that uh, that that complete ass whooping that we took. Now that was our turning point, so maybe I should thank them, but I just have a special place in my heart for Dallas and and and, and the Winter Classic when I was out there. I mean, there's so many things that they have done that just irritated me you as know a what? I used National to feel the same way about the Edmonton Oilers because <laughs> back in the '80s, Jets 1.0. They they were terrible, and then they were even more terrible and set a, an NHL record that will never be broken where they won nine games all season. Um, that record will never be broken. There's no freaking way. You couldn't do it on purpose. But anyways, um, they a couple of years later, they just started to get better. And, of course, Dale Howarchuk was a massive reason for that. And they put together a good team around Howarchuk and a couple of years after he got on the team, suddenly they were fourth overall in the entire league. And when I say fourth overall in the entire league, I mean they were second, or sorry, third in the in the division. So it was Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg, and then or somebody else, and then Winnipeg. Yeah, Smythe Division was like powerhouse division for several years. Even when the Jets finished like seventh or tenth. They were still better than most other teams in the conference. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were also one of the few teams that could actually play solid hockey against Edmonton Oilers. Despite the fact that they could not beat them in a single game in the playoffs for years. Years. Wow. <laughs> Until they finally beat them one game. Didn't matter. They had to go another series a couple of years later before they finally went up three games to one on them. And then well, I really think the NHL, the NHL needs to do something about this whole, um, the cap doesn't matter after the fact, and you can LTIR a player all year long, well, blah, yeah, blah, blah. They, they need to do something to stop that because now we have two teams in not even four years that have manipulated that rule. And you they can say, oh, no, we didn't do that on purpose. Okay. Right, like you don't know that no, rule they, exists. Of Come they did on, it on purpose. Uh, of course they did. Vegas is not even trying to hide it. Uh, they're very, very. No, they were hard. in the beginning. They're like, no, that's not what we're doing. Well, you know, blah year. blah blah. It's obvious. It's obvious. It was obvious this year what they're doing. Everybody knew it. Yeah, uh, but they were uh, denying it. Well, okay. Well, how do you deny the obvious though? That's like that's like having a cop walk up to you and watch you slash somebody's throat on camera in front of his body cam, which is running. And being live streamed on Facebook at the same time, and then you say, "I didn't do it." <laughs> well, they find they can find validation for what they're doing. They just make it up, and but it's obvious to you know people like us, like okay, it numbers are numbers. You can't deny the fact that it's a numbers a number. Yeah, okay? I think I think the but anyways, is does I I understand why they removed the cap in the playoffs. The reason being is because it's not uncommon. For five, sorry, five, so for one, two, three, four, or even some teams, even as many as five important players being out. And you have no choice. You can't remove every single player right. from your minor league team and A, expect to win a playoff series with them, and B, expect your minor league team not to end up in the doldrums because of it. It's not fair right. to anybody. It's not fair to the players. It sure as hell ain't fair to the people who pay hundreds of dollars Per game to watch games and as a season ticket yeah. holder you know what i'm talking about but uh the, the with the with god I forgot what i was gonna say um uh, with the with the salary cap being removed from that in the season at the i'm uh, sorry in the uh, postseason it allows them to say okay well we can sign this guy or we can keep this guy on the back shelf or whatever <clears throat> so they can go but the problem is is I do agree taking advantage of the salary cap uh, uh, in that way should not be allowed. So what they should do is have a team be penalized 
for it. There has to be some kind of penalization that says, if you're going to keep this player that, uh, that you've now signed because you have a guy in injured reserve, the injured reserve guy is not allowed to play in the playoffs if the other guy does. Or yeah, I, I, I don't know how they lay it out. Plays, but... The other guy can't like, there's gotta be a way, right. Or, or yeah. come up with something else. Cause it's not fair to the players. If the guy gets healthy, he should be able to play. So maybe they should say beyond a certain point, if he's not available to play, he's done for the season. That's it. If you're going to put somebody, because here's the thing, you know, damn well, they take a guy who the doctors will say he might be good to go with five games left in the season. And they're like 10 <laughs> games out, right. five games in. Let's put him on yeah. long term injured reserve instead. And then we'll bring him back on game one of the playoffs. And this is exactly <laughs> what Vegas is doing. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Why? Right. Honestly, I swear to you, a couple of years ago, I was praying that's what they were doing with Brian Little. And then after the second season of him not being there, I said, I think the guy's done. Uh, and that's too bad. Brian Little was fantastic. He would have been great with this team. And he, been, he would have been one of the veteran guys, but I guarantee you, he would have been scoring 30, 40 goals. I miss Brian Little. Uh, all right. Nostalgia away. All right. Let's yeah, so we'll 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 see how that that series plays out. But uh, right, let's in, in, in something a, a non playoff team, real quick. I just want to bring something because you talked about um, like the Jets only winning nine games. Well, the San Jose Sharks only won sixteen games all year. Yeah, so Quinn fired. He's Jets out. <laughs> yeah, but he's out. But that was back. He's out. Days. Yeah. So that's there's a lot of hockey news flying around. Well, other I will than, uh, say that they playoffs, so. that jet coach. So I, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, so we'll see a whole new, uh, we'll see a whole new, um, San when, Jose one of the early year. Jets coaches, by the way, uh, is their current coach. Uh, one of the seasons that they didn't do well, uh, one of the ones they did not make the playoffs, and uh, and they bring him, they bring him back for Jets 2.0. Uh, decades later, after he's got tons and tons of experience with other teams, and he's proven to be probably the best coach any form of the Winnipeg Jets has ever had. And yeah. that's saying a lot because I really liked their last coach. Yeah, I think Maurice did a good job. Maurice does a great job, but I think Maurice hits a yeah. wall and then and then he doesn't know what to do after that. And that's something that's not a terrible thing. I'm not saying that we should ever hire him. You want your team to be better and be a contender today. Hire yeah. hire Paul Maurice. I guarantee you, he'll if you have any amount of talent on your team, that guy will take your team and turn them from they're mediocre and could have a chance to they're great and they have a chance right now. And he did that well in one year with I, the Jets and in one year with the. I still wish we had Peter Laviolette. Honestly, uh, I know they didn't get rid of him. I don't think because they felt like he was the problem. I just think they felt like a change had to be made. I think it was a mistake to get um, rid And maybe they maybe they thought he lost control of the locker room or something. I don't really know. But the man has taken every team he's coached here in the last two decades to a Stanley Cup. He's he's set the NHL record for a coach to yeah. coach the most teams to an NHL Stanley Cup playoff round. Um I think the man's a great coach. Um, well, but like I said, I, I understand why they did it, you know. But but I I think it was a mistake. I I think oh, yeah. you gotta, I, it's I think like so. Honestly, um, there were calls to get rid of, uh, I was going to say Barry Schinker, that's the, the owner of the original one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the matter with me? <laughs> the general manager of the Winnipeg Jets right now. <laughs> he's he's a hero in Manitoba, I guarantee you. Um, but there were calls for, uh, uh, for the second straight year when they started to dive in the second half. Oh, get rid of him. He doesn't know what he's doing. And then they make that trade for Monahan, and a lot of people were saying, I don't know if that's a good trade. Why would they trade for that guy? First game in, he scores a goal, and everybody's like, yeah, great trade. And you know <laughs> yeah. what? He's done such a good job. And when it doesn't pan out completely, he figures out who do we keep and who do we. And he's smart, too. He always makes yeah. sure the coach gives his input on who works well together. And he's a team effort. Uh, to get the whole thing together, keep Shifley and Hellebuck on the team. Uh, well, and it was him that decided uh, we got to get Brassois back because if we're going to have a backup, we might as well have two number one goalies instead. It's been done. Yeah. Before. Well, it's Nashville you know the whole um, 
John Hines thing. I'm glad that he should have never came. That he was, in my opinion, a terrible coach. Oh, that um, was whatever. But previous year. Well, yeah, he he came in. They, yeah, he was terrible. At any rate, uh, yeah. Interesting fact, if nobody. <laughs> interesting fact, if you don't know this, is that Brunette, the current coach, under Barry Trotz, which Barry Trotz was the original coach of the Predators under David Poyle, which Poyle has now, re, you know, retired and right. Trotz took over. Brunette was playing for the Predator, Predators in the inaugural season and scored their first goal. And now he's coach. <laughs> Talk about That's full so circle. <laughs> That's um, pretty crazy. And, a, and he's up for coach. I think he's going to be up for coach of the year. I mean, he's done such a fantastic job in keeping focused on his you know, his method of play um, and turn the team around. And I think they feel like he's coach of the year, a candidate. Yeah, I don't necessarily disagree with look up an old Winnipeg Jets. Coach, um, um, now. But uh, he's done a, he's done a great job. And I, I think, um, I think he's going to work out well. He's, he's a fast paced. I want to score kind of coach as opposed to a very heavy defensive mind, which was Heinz. And um, Heinz's way of playing did, didn't work. At least it didn't work for the Predators. And I just think you got to score more goals than, I mean, yeah, you need a good defense, and we have a good defense, but right, you got to score goals. <laughs> goals win. <laughs> I, okay, I do. you just reminded me uh, when you were talking about that. Um, Barry Long, I, if you've ever even heard of him, because he's been around a long time now as far as I know. Um he uh, he played for the Kings, the Oilers, the Jets, and the Red Wings. And if I'm not mistaken, let's see, 83-84. He, he coached the Winnipeg Jets 83-84, 84-85, and 85-86. Um, oh, wow. Actually, it's weird. See, this is the thing about, the, about that era of the Jets. He coached them uh, 59 games in that first year. 25, 25, and 9. Uh, the next year, all 80 games, 43, 27, and 10. 96 points. They finished second in the Smythe, fourth overall. That's the year I was talking about. Um, and Edmonton destroyed them. <laughs> there was no point. Anyways, um, the following year, uh, he goes 19, 41, and 6. He's Ouch. fired. How the hell was it his fault? Seriously, yeah, they were second yeah. the year before. They traded, the general manager traded half the bloody team, and they fired the coach for doing badly. Anyways, that still happens today. It's not quite as prevalent because uh, usually uh, guys get signed away instead or, you know, did a, they didn't have the same uh, free agency stuff. They, it was different back then. You were either free agent or you weren't. Yeah. Um, it's a lot different now. Uh, and also a lot of guys played on teams either for all of their career or most of their career before being traded to one other team, maybe two. And let's say we're journeymen. No name players went from team to team to team like they do today. Like, honestly, if we say, oh, Nathan McKinnon this, Nathan McKinnon that, at the drop of a hat in a year or two, Nathan McKinnon could end up being a Nashville Predator or a Boston Bruin. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah, and we don't know. It's the end of people. Like, Whoa, they traded. Oh, okay. And that's it. Uh, Mark Shifley, on the other hand, jet for life, baby. Seven-year contract. He's been around like seven. He's going to retire as a Winnipeg Jet. And that's going to be nice to see. Very few Jets have ever done that. Uh, Thomas Steen is one of the very few. So Barry Trost made it clear when he took over. He is not bringing people in to retire. He's bringing people in to win hockey games. Exactly. You probably won't see any long-term contracts come up for the Preds for Well, there's a while. nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. No, I don't disagree. Bottom line is, 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 is that's what it is. And it's, it's the guys that do come to the team have to know that they have to do what they need to do uh, to, yeah. to, for the team, for the team to win. And if they don't, yeah. then start shopping because you're either going to get... It's a job. It's not a retirement home. home. And there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that if it's an open-minded thing. And all the players like to play together and they buy into the coaching and they like the, yeah. the and from what, everything I've understand about the national predators organization, it's one of the few that everybody 
wants to be part of when they get anywhere near it. And Winnipeg is also like that. Players come here and they go like, oh my God, I can't believe this organization is so unbelievable. It's amazing. They'll bend over backwards to help you when you need help. Uh, the community, yeah. people getting involved with community stuff. It's great. And I've seen all this stuff because you sent me all these links and stories and showed me videos of things that the Predators organization is involved in. And it's all fantastic. All the teams mm -hmm. do it. Some of them just do it more from here than they do from their wallets. And you can yeah. see the difference when there's a caring about the community they, they, that they're in as yeah. much as the money that they want to bring in. So yeah. Nashville is one of them. Uh, Calgary used to be, I can't really speak for it now, I don't know, but they used to be very much like that. <clears throat> Edmonton has always been like that, I guarantee you. They may not have great management every time, but they're always an organization Excuse that me. cares about being Edmonton. That's why they're yeah. the Edmonton Oilers, right? So anyways, let's talk about your series because we kind of went way off. Um, Nashville Predators. We're going to start with Vancouver. Start with Predators, Predators, eh? And I will, I will quickly say, after game one, I was 100% sure that Nashville was going to win game two because they actually dropped the ball in game one. They should have won it. Period. Oh, I 100% uh, agree. They're the the better team over two games, not just one. Well, too much time off for the Predators in my time of following them since 1998 has never boded well for the team. And they had one of the longest breaks coming into the playoffs as the teams. And you could tell they were out of sync and they just weren't as fast. And you're right. I think in, for the most part, they outplayed the Canucks in the first game. But that third period meltdown and they let them score two goals in 13, 12 seconds or whatever was the, you know, all she wrote. Um, so well, yeah, that, that being said, uh, the second game, much a different game. They were playing fast and hard. However, in the third period, it was all Canucks. It's like the Canucks lived in our end of the ice and just pelted our players and UC Saros with pucks. Now, the shots on goal were low, like 18 for them and 12 for us, which for a whole game, that's very, very low. But we had like 35, 36 block shots. <laughs> like we set a team record for block shots in one game. That, listen, on that I, game. I got to watch a good chunk of the third period because our game started so close together, despite the fact that they were two hours apart in actual geography which yeah. I don't understand how they managed to, whatever. Anyways, uh, what I saw from that third period, there were two things that stood out to me. One, Vancouver's not going to lie down and die. But even though they were completely running around and going, no, 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 well, let, let me, let's, let's show these Predators what we can do. The Predators still kept saying, bring it on. It's like they were inviting them. It's like they were saying, I don't care what you do. Because I know that this guy ain't going to let you in. And my, so like, man, yeah. I, I swear it was like watching Pecorini again. Yeah. Well, Soros that's who fire. trained him. So Fire in the third yeah. period, man. He looked yeah. like Hellebuck did in the first period in the Jets game. Because <laughs> he looked phenomenal in the first period. He did, don't get me wrong, yeah. Hellebuck looked great the entire game. It was, nothing was his fault in, in, in that loss. But I'll get to that later. Saros was, if Saros played like that the entire season, and I know it's easy to say he did, but nobody plays like that an entire season. No, no, that no, no. It's brilliant it, hockey. Playoffs uh, another whole, it's yeah. a whole other, another whole game. Way up to the task. But if he had played yeah. even half of that the entire season, he would be up for the Vezina because he's definitely Vezina quality goaltender. There's no yeah. doubt about it. So. He just had a little more uh, peaks and valleys this year than that Mr. Consistent you know, a lot that of he's had in the past. Because he would make, he would make you know, 39 saves in a game and still lose, you know, four to one. Uh, I mean, you, how, who do you blame that on? You can't blame that on a goalie. Well, a goalie it goes into the whole, saves. it goes into the whole brunette system, right? Because yeah. a whole new way of playing was introduced. Like, they moved Yossi around. Uh, they brought in different players. They're like, okay, we want, we want um, fast, hard forechecking, uh, you know. Which they did last night. Yeah. And so they just, 
I think it was a whole different change of pace that changed the whole rhythm of their play together. Um, so and then after so, the second half of the season, they got back into sync and, and they've been playing pretty consistent, you know, since that whole, you're not going to see the concert incident. Um, they all bought in like, look, we're not playing like, like we need to play and we need to do better as a team, as players outside right. of coaching. They said they became accountable. Like, look, guys, we got to play better, period. You know, that's just all there is to it. So, yeah. Well, yeah, you know, the whole team, honestly, I think so. Basically, what you're saying is it took them a while to buy in. They needed a half a season to, to, to buy into it and another several games beyond that to really go. I think I think I understand where you're coming from. Um, yeah. Interesting. Even Yossi said the same Jets thing. Like kind of did it the opposite way. They instantly bought into the system. New coach, new system. They bought into it immediately. Um, but they kind of sort of didn't quite really catch it enough that when there was a problem, they fell apart a little bit and they tried to get it back. And then they went on that six game losing streak. And they mentioned this on the broadcast in an interview uh, last night. Um, apparently, the coach walked in after that six game losing streak, showed him a video, wouldn't say what it was. But he showed him a video, he's, and, and he says, you see? And they went, oh, I get what you're saying. And they never lost another game until the playoff game. They just lost last night. They won eight yeah. straight and then won that day. So technically speaking, for the first time ever, any team, any team ever with the name Winnipeg Jets attached to them won nine consecutive games, including a playoff game. That has never happened before. That's a record. Nice. No one's mentioning it, but it's actually true. No yeah. team is ever. Well, the last thing I'm going to say about the 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 Predators Connect series is, uh, I think the favor lies on the Predators side only because of the experience they have in playoffs. Because again, that Canucks haven't been in the playoffs since what 2012 or 15 or something. Well, never mind. It's been a team. long How time. Many players on the team have, have, have been there. Exactly. Yeah, they have very few players. Demko was out. I don't. I think they're. I think their backup goalie played decent. I don't think he was the problem. Um, you know, you just saw like I think you saw that Forsberg goal. Forsberg scored a Forsberg goal scorer goal. Right. I mean, it was just yeah, like fast see, hands, fast this hands. This is the thing I deep, love boom. about it. This year has been so fantastic. It's been so many. Yeah. It's decades, decades. See, back in the nine. When did you? When did you first get the Predators out there? I don't remember what. Ninety eight. Ninety eight. Okay, so you have absolutely no idea what hockey looked like in nineteen eighty five, eighty eight, or even ninety two for that matter. Never watched a hockey game until nineteen ninety eight. Let so let me let me just say the fast paced hockey that we've seen this year is about eighty two to eighty five percent of what we used to see almost every game back in 1985, 88, or even 92. Mm. Just to put yeah. this into perspective, after Timo Solani and, uh, I forgot his name, the, the Russian guy, um, scored 76 goals each. Timo Solani is a rookie, setting a record that will never be broken, obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. 130-some points, too, by the way. So Obviously, also a record. Anyways, um, uh, they did that, and... Then after that, I think one other player, uh, and this was 1994, if I'm not mistaken, that that happened. So um, after that, I think one other player managed to make it to 70 goals. Until this year, no other player had gone past 68. So the 69 goals that what's his name got? What's his yeah. name? Matthews. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can't forget Austin Matthews, babe. 69 goals. That he got it's a, is, that's is a feat. the highest in a long time. It basically, yeah. I, you know what? I'm not, I'm not really a math, like I'm not a big, I don't dislike the guy. I wish him all the best. Um, I'm not a massive Austin Matthews fan. There's a lot of other players I'd actually rather watch uh, just for their style of play and the way they play. But he came this close to 70 goals. I would mm -hmm. love to have seen him score 70 or even 80 and have it done again. Because there's a lot of players that I like, I know will never score 70 or 80. Austin Matthews yeah. is a guy who might. Nathan McKinnon is a guy who might. Right? Uh, and honestly, I really wish uh, that, uh, I was going to say Roman Yossi, for sake, 
uh, Forsberg. I wish Forsberg was five years younger because if he was and hockey's going back into the higher scoring thing again, he's the kind of guy I could see scoring 70 goals. No question. Well, this was his highest scoring year, 48. So he's got a long way to go. And and that's that's older. That's the older guy. Well, yeah. Him yeah. in his prime. It really isn't. But that's how good he is that he's he's getting up there and he's like, I'm gonna score 48. Screw you guys. <laughs> if 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 hockey had been this fast paced three, four years ago, even, I I think you know what I you know what I honestly believe? How many? Do you remember how what uh what his numbers were like in 2018? Mm, not off the top of my head, I'd have to look it up. Because that is without a doubt the best team that the Preds ever iced, 2017, 2018. I mean, no doubt about it. They, the only yeah, and it was it was more across the board than having a few select players. I mean, you had didn't get to the Stanley Cup was because of the Jets. I would say this to my dying day. If it hadn't been for the Jets, the Predators would have won the Stanley Cup. I still think the Preds would have beat Vegas that year. Jets didn't have what it needed to do to beat them. The Preds did. The Jets just happened to know how to beat the Preds. That's it. It's like yeah. if Winnipeg loses to the, the Avalanche, um, to me that means nothing if they were to play, say, the Edmonton Oilers. I think the Oilers would beat the Avs. Yeah. yeah. That'll be interesting to see who ends up. It, it would be interesting. Up and, I, it wouldn't be yeah. interesting for me because that means my team's out. But <laughs> <laughs> right. But I will say this. I did discover, and I may be wrong about how this works, but I'm not so sure if the Jets and Preds win. I don't think they play each other. I think that actually would happen. They would both have to win the first two rounds and, and meet each other in the conference final. That's interesting. So I'm kind of rooting for that. So we can have a rematch in the conference. Well, the conference final is next. Is round two no. because then no, it's no, the division. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> oh wait, no, I'm, I'm thinking. Sorry, I've got him. Ba I've got him <laughs> backwards. I've got division and conference mixed up. Yeah, well, that's yeah. why because technically speaking, the division and conference is sort of intermixed because of the wild card spot. Um, yeah. For instance, you're playing interdimensional or extra dimensional, whatever. <laughs> divisional, not dimensional. Divisional. I said dimensional twice. I meant divisional. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know who we'd play. I, 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 well, I guess, yeah. I guess it would have to be. Um... Well, originally, yeah, I don't know. And this is only because know. logically it would make more sense for any teams within the same division to play each other until there was only two teams left in the conference, regardless of where they came from. However, as far as I understand it, you're playing the, you finished second. Well, don't take this the wrong way. I don't mean it the way it sounds, but second last to make it into the playoffs versus second to make it into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Right. So you beat them. It doesn't necessarily give you an advantage over anybody because you finished second last, but, but, but right. nonetheless, the next one that you play would normally naturally be in the division. However, if the Jets, well, wait a minute, now hang on a second. Jets finished ahead of everybody else. So, yeah, that's right. We're just going to have to wait and see. I, I, maybe you would play the Jets because it would be the same division. Okay. And if the Jets win and the Preds win, the Jets are basically the number one. No, wait, Dallas. I keep forgetting about Dallas. I think you would get stuck with Dallas. I'm sorry to say that. Yeah. Uh, if you win. Yeah, I have, I have a feel. I, I have a sneaky that. feeling that some way, shape, or form, whoever wins the, excuse me, the Dallas Vegas game is who will end up playing. Who the heck is Edmonton playing? And why are we not talking about them? <laughs> um, it's not like I have a disdain for them. I don't. I, I, I actually, I'm kind of a fan of them because, because of Wayne Gretzky. Uh, we enjoyed hating him so many years. The Kings, yes, yeah, but they're Kings. playing the Kings. Oh, they, oh God, no! The you know, Edmonton's going to destroy them. I'm sorry. Yeah, they, they're done. Yeah, it's over. Edmonton's taken that one. Uh, I'm assuming they won the first game. Uh, I'm actually going to look, look it up because I don't. For some I don't. Reason, they didn't. Play I don't like remember everyone else. They say everyone played on Saturday and then Sunday, and then all of a sudden they're like, 
Oh, you don't get to play till Monday. What? Whatever. Which uh, Boston's beating Maple Leafs right now, and it's 10 minutes in the third, by the way. What's the score? Uh, <laughs> um, it's 2-3-2 uh, two, two or 2-1, two, two, I think it was. Two, uh, so let's see. Uh, Hang on a second here. That's, yeah, they could come back. Stranger things have happened. Uh, Why is it going backwards? Okay. Okay, I got that. All right, so... Oops. I can't find the information. Yeah, I've got it right here. I'm just looking through the list here. Okay, so we have Bruins. Yeah, it's 2-1, Bruins, Maple Leafs. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Let's see. So, Kings, Oilers. Oh, yeah, Oilers, 7-4 on Monday. Yeah, okay. Oilers scored so, seven the goals. The fact that they allowed four is not really surprising because the Kings are capable. And they play tonight at 9 o'clock. Central time. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, 10, 10 Eastern. Okay. Uh, Golden Knights are 9, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. Yeah. Uh, so be keeping an eye on that one. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, who won that first one between the Knights and the Stars again? Knights did. The Knights. Okay. I, 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 I don't, you know what? We're going to have a rift right down the middle right now uh, because I'm rooting for the Stars. Uh, Jets have been destroyed by the Golden Knights two out of four playoff years. The only two they actually made it that far to do it. One of them was in the first round. I, I, I no, I don't, I don't believe the Jets will ever beat them in the playoffs unless God Himself is the center iceman. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, I, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Oh, it, it, we haven't mentioned the Islander Hurricanes, but let's just be honest. Oh, the on. Hurricanes are going to destroy Please, the Islanders. That, it's they're up two two zero on this. Whole Washington. Thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Is it even worth talking about? Probably not. But you know what? No. Uh, Anyways, if, yeah. you're an, if you're an Islander, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So what? What? what uh, yeah. Let's. I'm going to scroll back for a second. I just want to see. Uh, Canes beat the Islanders 5-3. So they didn't destroy them. They beat them. Um, it was good. But they didn't destroy them. Uh, yeah, but for, I don't think the Islanders have the staying power. I mean, the Hurricanes have been in playoffs. and Oh, no. I, I just, I, I think. There's, yeah. no, there's no denying that. Oh, wow. I didn't realize this. The Kings won their last game of the season. Before the playoffs started, yeah. by only one goal in overtime against the Blackhawks, they don't stand a chance. Oh, against I was gonna say, who are they playing? The San Jose? <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They don't stand a chance. Do you remember the days when you didn't make fun of a team like Chicago Blackhawks? You feared them. It was more fun because they were truly one of the greatest teams that ever played. Um, yeah, but two of the greatest teams ever to be iced teams that had good teams that were contenders solidly for more than one year and even won more than one cup chicago blackhawks and prior to that detroit red wings yeah um prior yeah. to that you had to go all the way back to pittsburgh who managed to put together a couple in a row um and prior to that it was edmonton prior to that it was islanders and prior to that it was montreal several times but yeah, here's what I don't understand though about Chicago. Able to put that kind of solid together as a team that was winning the Stanley Cup. So the best you can ever really hope for nowadays is a team that could win the Stanley Cup, but shows every year that you need to be afraid that you're the team they're going to beat to get there. And well, what what I don't understand about Chicago is but hang on a second. Every year Vegas, even when they don't finish anywhere near the top has been able to instill that fear in the playoffs in other teams. So they go in there thinking, well, these guys know how to beat you in the playoffs. The Jets are trying to get that back. They had it until they played Vegas because they they beat, was it St. Louis or Dallas? I think it was Dallas that year, uh, which probably made you happy. Uh, they, 
And, and then, unfortunately for the Preds, they beat the Preds. But that game went seven and could have gone either way. Seven games, and it could have gone to anybody. It was incredible. It was probably the best playoff series I'd ever witnessed in my life at that point. Um, but I will say this. I'm enjoying just about every game that I've managed to get even a little bit of looking at. Um, the Jets games, even the one they played yesterday, for the most part, until they kind of sort of got a little lack of days ago in the last few minutes, um, it was great. The, 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 the game was definitely slower than the previous one, but it was still fast-paced, hard-hitting, fantastic playoff hockey, the kind of which I don't recall seeing this many great playoff games in, in, in the opening round in decades. And the Preds are no different. I'm seeing fast-paced, hard-hitting, supreme goaltending, unbelievable goals. <laughs> mm. I still say that that's one of the best goals I've seen so far this year, by the way. I wish I could. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, hopefully there's more to come. <laughs> oh, there, so. will, there, there will be. Uh, yeah. I will say this. Uh, you remember I mentioned highlight reel goals when I texted you yesterday uh, because the Jets had one too. Um, but it was a different type of effort in the way it went. And it was a shot that went in. That Forsberg goal was just one of those ones where you're like, you knew he was going to score 25 feet before he got to the net. And you can't tell me you weren't thinking the same thing. He was on his way to the net, and you were like, he's going to score. He well, yeah. I mean, you could tell that he was definitely on, on a mission. And yeah. DeSmith had no idea where he was going. He's trying to follow his hands. And you know, Forsberg has Forsberg really fast hands. Gonna go. I think he just no, waited. Forsberg knew exactly what he was doing. You no, watch the no, replays. He, he knew exactly he was going to go top shelf on that guy. Oh, so he wanted to think. He, he, he basically, he, he, he played him. He deked him hard. Yeah. Because <laughs> DeSmith is looking at the ground like, okay, you're going to go to the, my left, my right, you know, five hole. And then he's like, oh, no, you're going to go over by my head. I just saw that go yeah. by me in the well, net. You, know, often, yeah. often when you deke a goaltender, it isn't because you know you want to go backhand upstairs or forehand five hole or whatever. It's because you want to create an opening and take the first one you see. Guys like Mark Shifley, uh, uh, Connor McDavid, they do that all the time. Um, but it's really a treat to see a guy like Forsberg go in on net and, like you said, know exactly what he wants to do and make the goalie screw up exactly like he wants him to. Yeah. And just undress him. Shifley did that a few games back. Uh, where he just got a, a breakaway goal. And there's, Shifley's not that fast, but he just did it so perfectly, he couldn't be caught. And he got up to the goaltender, and he just, like, just a, that's it. Just a little of this, but he did it so perfectly. It was like a like a Mario Lemieux-type move where he barely had to move, and the puck just went right over his shoulder into the top shelf. And it, it well, reminded me... Forsberg goal reminding me of that game they do on the screen. You know, they put the... They say... Follow the nut underneath the cup, you know, and they move the cup yeah, around. Yeah, you got to. Just Smith is like trying to follow the nut. <laughs> you can't find it anymore. Cup, cup and balls, or 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 the shell game. <laughs> when you call it a shell yeah. game, usually referring to it uh, being a scam and trying to get money from people. Uh, but it's also a cup and ball thing. It's a magician's trick that some guys who aren't magicians learn how to do. <laughs> Well, I can do that, by the way. The Smith had no idea where it was until no, it was no, in yeah, the net. No, I, I did. He even see it go past him. Like, I think he looked after it went past him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was he was looking at the ground. He's like, "Oh, okay, yeah, there it exactly. is." <laughs> Anyways, uh, we, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a goal scorer's goal. So we do know one thing. I got, we got, I'm going to give you my take, and then you can give me your take. Um, here's where I think we sit at this right now. I am not 100% sure that Jets are going to win and go all the way. I definitely want them to. I think they have the talent. I think they have the goaltending. And I think they have the ability. If the Jets get past the first round, they're going to be a danger to go all the way. Period. Obviously, if they don't, that's irrelevant. But if they do, I think uh, all bets are off as to whether they can go all the way or not. Now, I'm not sure the same can be said for every team making it past the first round. 
Some teams do it with a little more cockiness and a little less actual skill level or paying attention to what the coach is trying to say. I think the Vancouver Canucks are a fantastic team, have been all year. If they beat the Preds, I don't think they can win the Cup. If the Preds beat them, I think they're the most dangerous team in the playoffs, including against the Jets. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. The road to the Stanley Cup might very well go through Nashville this year. Unless you're in the East, in which case it only goes through Nashville if Nashville makes it. <laughs> but my point is that Nashville's better than most people have given them credit for. They were statistically, by their amount of victories and points, the best team in the league in the last, I think they said 23 games of the season or something like that. The best yes. team in the league. Uh, that is saying a lot, especially considering the Jets won eight consecutive games at the end of the year. And Nashville lost two of their last four or something like that. And they still ended up being statistically the best team in the last 25 games or something. But uh, Edmonton, Edmonton has the same chance whether, you know, uh, whether they win in seven or win in four. Um, they are a team that could go all the way, but they could also just get absolutely destroyed by another team that wants it badly enough. I think they're slightly weaker on the defense than they need to be. Their goaltending is good and it can be excellent but I don't know that it matches up to Winnipeg's goaltending for sure uh, definitely isn't as good as Soros and uh, I guess it depends on if Vancouver's goalie's out for the, for the duration or not so I don't know Vegas is a, is, is a, is a crapshoot Vegas is always dangerous and Dallas is always dangerous so who do I think is the best chance in the West yeah, give me another game to come up with that one. But I I, I want to say still at this point, I think the Jets, the Preds, and Dallas are probably the favorites. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't, I wouldn't doubt it. Dallas going and win the cup again. It's just a really I, I didn't good, say that. solid. Let's not break my no, I, I think they have, I think they are still probably one of the favorites to win the cup. Um, I don't know that the Predators have the skill set uh, across the board to take it into the finals. Um, I do think we're going to make it into round two only because I think that we are better um, long term in the playoffs. I think this round is probably going to go six games, uh, which would be good with me because that means I'll get to watch him win the series. <laughs> Because they'll do it at home in Game Six. Yeah, but I, uh, yeah, I know. would agree with that. Yeah, so, and I think that I think the Jets are going to pull this out too. I don't. I don't think the Jets are going to lose Round One. I, I, really I didn't don't think so. They're either. too good I of a team the overall. They but you know what? When they do that, they generally come back and go. We, should, you know what? We made a mistake. Let's show you why we know we made a mistake, and not and show you why it's not going to happen again. And I've yeah. said this before, but aside from Vegas, because I'm still afraid of them. I'm not sure that there's any team in, in the league right now that can actually win four out of seven games against the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah. But I, I'm saying it skeptically yeah. now because of the, what I saw last night. Anyways, having said that, we'll, we'll mention next time what we think about the Eastern a little bit more because we really are going to run out of time. So uh, with that said, Robert? Well, go Preds. And until next week, We'll see you on the flip side. All right. Well, go Jets go. <laughs> and everyone have a great time watching the playoffs.